Hello everybody, welcome to uh, Coaching Vulpes in Coulter Replay Analysis. There you go. So we've got here, he's got a Lizardman team versus a Skaven team. Um, unfortunately, a block was made so I can't see the skills. So let's see. Um, I think it was a, uh, the block source. Was the first yeah. one I so now we can see the skills. So first of all, set up. Um, oh, it's Cake or Death. Uh, I know the name. Um, he's got a block gutter a wrestle gutter a nudge five gutter um and a mighty blow uh what's that storm vermin that's what they're called uh versus a block saurus a miss next game saurus so there's two journeyman skinks that's that's very bad being a saurus down obviously and then two sidesteppers so but it seems like reasonably even tv because you haven't got an inducement so yeah i think it was yeah yeah, that's surprising, isn't it? Because his team's, his team's, I think, a lot better. I think this is a very rough matchup. Um, I don't hate this setup. Maybe you could have put the Saurus one, like, oh, ha 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 ha. Let's let's use this. These Saurus could be like one further out, so like in this square, and that square, um, so that you know to protect more against a blitz. Because obviously you're really you're really worrying about a blitz when they've got an agility five gutter and the, uh, you know the, your biggest setup nightmare is so if, then then these could have both gone one square out as well. Uh, so the, uh, the the two square gap just isn't enough in that situation, right? If they get a blitz. Yeah, basically. Well, they could be, but I think you would want you'd want the sidelines covered as well. So if if you put these okay. out, uh, glorious. <laughs> Thank you very much, VIP buy cakes. <laughs> Jim Madden. <laughs> Maybe Jim Romo. Romo's all the rage now, isn't he? <laughs> Source goes here and boom! <laughs> yeah. He's definitely going to run right. <laughs> Thank you very Thank much, you. VIP Pancakes. <laughs> right, so, yeah. So, I think if, you, if you'd moved them out one square wider, then you could have moved these all guys one square wider. So, everyone could have been one square wider. So, that it just made it harder for him on a blitz. Um, then, also, what you could have done was have the have the loner skink on the line and then the saurus back here so that you know you're completely guarding the sidelines from getting broken through and then by having uh say so say, say, yeah say this guy if this guy was here and the skink was here and the saurus was there there's no way you could break through in a blitz because you know, if he if he knocks him down, there's still a screen of two. No, there isn't. <laughs> Is there? Oh no, because you've got this guy. Then these guys would come forward as well. So basically, everything would go. Um, I'll show you the squares, right? So here we go. I'll I'll use I'll use this actual thing. So here, 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 and here, and then the crocs in the middle there still. So you know, so if you do that, yeah. th th this is the absolute best anti-blitz setup that you can make. So like you nearly did it. Like you know, it, it's still good against most blitzers, but that that would have been, oh, I've moved the camera, so it, <laughs> um, so yeah, so that that's the absolute best possible. And then obviously yeah, if you if if you make this one here a Saurus, then um he can't he can't blitz down the sideline and get you. Okay, and, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, so there'd and be it does seem like Skaven get blitzes all the time. Like somehow exactly. they are predisposed to get blitz every game. Exactly. Yeah. That, so, so I mean, and lizard men are the perfect team to do it because obviously normally you'd have an, an extra Saurus there, so you'd have you'd have all Saurus yeah. blocking the blocking the blitzes through. I mean, that that's the absolute number one thing against Skaven: protect the ball, be scared of blitzes. Now the ball's yeah. already in a tackle zone and some tackle zones around it, so I don't hate just making that block. So maybe you could have brought another skink in to cover first um, before making the block without block or yeah, bonehead, especially with block and even three dice with him. Uh, yeah, yeah. So you'd say yeah. So the safe moves they could they could and should have been made first. Oh, I don't okay. like this. I don't like this. I don't like this blitz here. So like, I can see. I can see why you went that way, um, you know, because people are in base to base. But personally, um, this is freaking annoying to tab out. I think you know you want to. Uh, you're scared about the Skaven breaking through all the time, so I would have just blitzed this lineman here, and then like put him back in this square probably, 
Okay. And just try and screen everything off at all times. You know, you just you're terrified of them. Well, well, you should be terrified of them. You know, sneaking through and stealing the ball. Um, so yeah, see, two, uh, one square gap means you can get around this side. And then yeah, you've left a guy behind who maybe should have come up first. One in nine yeah. the pickup sucks, but yeah, I think definitely. So you know, so if you've done that, if you've done that, uh, let's uh, pause it again. So if you if you've done that blitz instead, you've you've got a screen here and an extra saurus there, and if you bring this guy up first, you've got all four skinks around the ball. So that straight away puts you in a better spot, doesn't it? If yeah, if things go tits up as they are want to do, especially yeah. against Gaven. <laughs> yeah, makes sense. Like obviously against Gaven, you wanna you wanna fucking you know beat them up and that, but it's not always that easy, and it is e it is always that easy for them to do some bullshit and get the ball. <laughs> so ball yeah. is always always should be your priority against Gaven. I have lost games because I have uh, I have focused on the rat ogre thinking the way they can win is by getting removals. Um, obviously in this case he hasn't got a rat ogre to distract you, so that's that's something. Did a dodge. Okay, so now this is this was quite a while ago, wasn't it? This game, so unfortunately, we're probably not been going to be able to get an insight into your thinking for the turn. But uh, yeah, it was probably I think it was last week or something, maybe a week ago. Right, right. So do do you remember what your plan was for this turn? <laughs> Let's see. My my first mode of action was really just. Uh, get as many two dice blocks as I can on these guys. Yeah. Um, I feel like the ball was in two tackle zones and he's going to have to do some pretty serious dodges to get to the ball, so I feel pretty comfortable making the blocks first. Yeah. I mean... Uh, that was just my thinking anyways. Yeah, you pretty much always... You're never going to be wrong if you're, if you're trying to maximise blocks you're making and minimise blocks you're taking. That's pretty much always... Always a good thing for any team, isn't it? Hello, Tinnithor. Or Tiny Thor. Maybe it's a Tiny Thor. Um, that'd be like if Fash had a magic hammer. He'd be Tiny Thor. <laughs> <laughs> right, so made a block there. Ah, yeah. See, again, that's a one in nine, so. You've got to think what you. Before you make that block. So here we go. You've made two one in nine blocks without activating the Crocs. So. Making that block, you've got to think about what you're going to do with the Crocs. So, that's the ultimate... This is not even a safe move first, activating the Crocs. It's like, it's beyond safe, because at the moment, he's an actual liability, isn't he? Not having a tackle zone. So, yeah. it, it would have been okay making that block first, if you were then going to, like, blitz this gutter runner with the Crocs. Three dice, mighty blow hit. I, 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 would, have, I would have preferred that, rather than blitzing this lineman. Because this guy's behind your enemy lines, so I, either... The, the, the two blitzes I would have thought about making would have been blitz this Storm Vermin who's kind of behind your line and, you know, get everything, keep everything in front of you or advance forward, blitz this gutter with put a tail on the gutter and also mark two players with a Crocs and get Mighty Blow hit, knocked down on him potentially and then you could, you could then, like, kind of push down this side. Um, so... See, I, I think... Um... One reason I maybe was wary of that is because um, I feel like I, I don't want the Crocs to get out of position, right? I, I would like the Crocs to kind of stay in the middle of the field as I can um, and kind of in the middle of the action. But, um, yes, I see what you're saying. I, I guess I'm, I am a little hesitant to, like, send them uh, to either, you know, side of the side of the, the pitch. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. So, like, but where you ended up moving him, yeah, so, so, so seeing, seeing as this was your kind of idea, I would have activated him first and run him around and move him one square diagonally up. So then you yeah, wouldn't I have had... Yeah, should have activated him first before the yeah. blocks. So that makes sense. Yeah, because yeah, you've, you've actually, you're actually standing where the Saurus was. So you couldn't have moved him this specific point um, without making the block first. But you could have moved him diagonally up one. And then you could have moved that before you made the block, which would have just made everything much better, wouldn't it? Yeah, um, but that's basically strictly better to activate the Crocs first. So basing two guys isn't bad. Um, 
obviously it does give him one assist to give it to two dice knockdown, and then you kind of stranded a Saurus a little bit. I would rather keep the Saurus more bunched. So maybe I would have, uh, well, as I say, if you're not going to do the, the Croc splits, which I probably would have done just because, you know, killing the gutter runners is, is what Reddit says to do. <laughs> um, or VIP Kurgo. Um, no, but it's true. That it's true, though. Like, obviously, if you're getting a, mighty, a three dice mighty blow hit on him is, is about as good as you're going to, well, it is as good as you're possibly going to get in this game. So yeah. maybe that would have been an idea. But if you're not going for that, if you're going for this more solid form, I would have probably blitzed this blitzer because, you know, the, 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 main, the main threat to your skinks is the, just the two blockers anyway, but also the block mighty blow. I mean, he if you can base him, if you can base, if you can get the mighty blow guy, you know, knock down, base on a Saurus, uh, you know, struggle to get assist on him, just take him out of the game, that's ideal. But yeah. you also want to take out the other blitzer as well. Like, bl block players are pretty scary for skinks in general. Yeah, yeah no doubt. Yeah. And that was um, one mistake I made was throwing that uh, that loner skink uh, towards, uh, towards the end of the pitch, uh, the yeah. one on the far left. Yeah. That was a yeah. mistake. Yeah, exactly, yeah. So you've exposed him, yeah. And then he gets three diced with block mighty blow and removed, yeah. You know, yeah. You, if, if he had just been here, you he would have been blitzed by the block guy and would have still been removed, to be fair. Oh, no, he wouldn't have, armor seven, he wouldn't have even broken his armor, so you'd have only got two dice on him and might not have broken his armor. On the other yeah. hand, you know, he might have just killed a Saurus, so he, <laughs> you know, he could have just blitzed <laughs> this Saurus, and then it might not have been... Uh... Well, percentage-wise, it was the wrong thing to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, hard to, it's hard to just say things are wrong or right, you know, and especially you especially can't judge them off the result. <laughs> Yeah. 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 So he did a, a ballsy one dicer there without block, didn't he? And wasn't even clearing tackle zones unless he got a power. So I think that was a bad idea. And he just one diced you there and got you. Yeah, I, di I didn't like that follow. And it was a cast. <laughs> so, abs I mean, in a perm. So, ab I'm absolute. That was a perfect. Yeah, that, that, that was rough. Yeah. Yeah, it was. Oh, you, you, did you forget this skink that was behind here? I did, yeah. Yeah, because I, I forgot him just on the replay. <laughs> I, I realized that like a couple turns later, I was like, shit. <laughs> yeah. Right. Oh, the echo is bad. Yeah, I don't have, I don't have headphones, unfortunately. I, I'll, I'll have to find them before the next one. But, um, sorry. Right. So yeah. So yeah. I mean, I, I forgot him there as well that turn. Uh, but yeah, I didn't like that follow because again, you gave away a block. As it was, he took a two dice. He took a one dice. He could have easily moved. Moved a player to assist and made it a three di a two dicer. So, you know, right. yeah, ev every single block, maximize blocks you make, minimize blocks you take. Yeah, and I think one thing I, I do uh, too often is um, he was like pretty much too far away from all the other players, anyways. Like you said, I just kind of left him out there. Um, yeah. It was kind of easy pickings. So, um, even though one dice power to a perm is an ideal, um, I kind of got punished by just leaving him out there. Yeah. So now we've got a base cage, which uh, isn't ideal. Right. Um, bonus, let's see, yeah. Jesse, what I do here next. Yeah, so so this turn here, all right, we'll fucking wait. It's annoying that they just go straight into it. They, you know, you don't get a, you, the only way you can pause is with a big turn two or whatever <laughs> on it. Uh, so yeah, here you see, I would have been tempted to just not activate the, because the crocs, you can't move him to a spot. super good spot. Yeah. You know, you, yeah. you maybe move him, what, maybe forward two or something, and uh, you could still just two dice him with a with a mighty blow then, maybe. But, you know, if, if you can't move him to a good place, then instead maybe form the, ca form the cage around the crocs, which you could have done with, it, with this guy, and uh, though this would have stranded him. So it's, you know, everything's pluses and minuses. Forgot about him again. <laughs> um... <laughs> Yeah, you know, so so because he's active, maybe maybe he's, maybe he's forming the cage around the crocs would have been an idea. Yeah, makes sense. Um, and eliminate that risk. And again, I'm not sure about the follow up on there because it was a little bit, you know, he could have maybe he's done things. Yeah. And also base that guy. See, just just here is just like basing, and like you can base on offense sometimes. But you've only got five Sauras. You've just lost one as well. 
and he's he's getting these dice and he's knocking you down, isn't he? So yeah, I, I do try to stay out of base contact if possible. But he's, I think he, I think Keiko Death's gonna done a good job here of just taking the blocks and knocking everyone down, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah, no doubt. Base the ball. <laughs> Actually, quite good against agility three guys with dodge. <laughs> <laughs> Done it, <Alex. laughs> Um Yeah, so now you're in a world of hurt, aren't you? With those three knockdowns, including the stun, <laughs> including that removal. Now, not it's just, now there's not a lot you can do, even if you were, right. even if you were Superman. I don't think. Um, remember the guy, though. <laughs> <laughs> that would help. <laughs> yeah. So, what do you do? I mean, what? It's tough, isn't it? E strength five there, so you could one dice his mighty blow. That doesn't seem good. Two dice him doesn't seem good. Two dice you could two dice him, two dice him, and dodge away and potato against a block gutter runner and agility five gutter runner. Like it's a yeah. you're just in a nightmare now. I don't think yeah. I could be any help at this point. <laughs> but <laughs> no, yeah, it was the preceding moves before that they got me in the situation anyway. So yeah, and then five, I mean that was the first one in nine block. To be fair. They're gonna they're gonna happen against Gaven and that's that again is a terrifying a terrifying place to be in that you know you, even your safe blocks are pretty risky and oh well that was a good block let's kill the guy I think a dodge to base oh okay you're making it reforming a cage fair enough bit of a cage I don't know Blitzing a gutter to get him out. Yeah, that's okay as well. So yeah, it's somewhat of a cage, isn't it? That, that's probably, to be fair, that's probably about as good as you could have done there. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, this this next turn's gonna gonna hurt, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. <laughs> so, yeah, he blocks him down. With block. Another Saurus down. Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, even though they're strength four and armor nine, they can just go down, can't they? It's, uh... Yeah, when you don't have block on them, it's not that hard to, to get them on the ground. And if they take enough um, armor rolls, they're bound to. Some of them are bound to break. Yep. Yep, and he's he's getting in the cage now. I mean, double basing means that you've the stuns were huge. I mean, to be fair, he was lucky to get two stuns, and he was also lucky to get a one dice power. But yeah, that was the thing. I guess, I guess, your biggest mistake in this game <laughs> was only having five Saurus, <laughs> which obviously wasn't <laughs> yeah, by <ultimately. laughs> wasn't by choice. But I mean, you know, it's horrible only having five Saurus, and then losing him going down to four is just, you know, it's just it's just horrible because your your advantage of having the strength is basically neutered by not having the players. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be really hard now. I was able to salvage some. I remember this being a close game towards the end. Um, yeah, one dice king dodge. block loner, not ideal. <laughs> yeah. But, it, you know, you're up shit creek, really. Like, that's, that's the problem, you yeah. know. You're reduced to making these one in nine dodges and then unsurprisingly fail it. Now the ball's on the ground. You can two yep. dice the crocs, pick it up, run away. Yep. Yep. Yeah, this this half is probably over now. <laughs> yeah, it may, maybe maybe time to fast forward to the second half. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and he, he get, gets a tee off there. I, I think he made that two. I think I would have made that a three dicer if I could have done. No, nah, I guess he couldn't, no, because the crocs was there, so... Two dice was right. He just got the he just got the ball scatter, so he didn't even need to clear the crocs. Wow, disgusting. Yeah. All right, let's let's <laughs> skip forward because <laughs> we know what happens from here. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, even if you marginally did something, you know, that could have been better. It looks like you did all right to force him to score, or did he just choose to score? Um. I don't really remember, honestly. Oh, so I'd, actually, we shouldn't we shouldn't have skipped ahead because 
he didn't stall out the half, so actually, the skip ahead was was preemptive. I, I can't believe that that he scored there. That's that's bizarre to me that he that he wouldn't stall out the whole half there. I mean, with such an advantage that he had, I would have hundred percent stalled out the half. So maybe what you should yeah, have I, done. I think I think he gave me some extra um, KO rolls as well. I'm not sure if I had any knocked out. I think I had one or two. Yeah, because it was your half. Um, and you, you've made two cards, so he's only got nine players on the pitch. Um, no, he's got ten. He had a reserve. Okay. Um, but you've got three guys down. Maybe he just thinks he can... But he's not He's not trying to go 2-0 up, so... That was a weird decision by him to not stall that out. I mean, I would have made sure of the half. Stalling the half out if I was him. So maybe he's... I could have coached cake or death there for the last... <laughs> the last the last couple of turns yeah, when you... He when definitely you're up, had, yeah... Gave me a chance to score here. Yeah, and he's blitz. He didn't set up for the for the turnover. If he'd set up for the two for the two, to, but obviously he gets the blitz anyway. But if he had set up to go to go two nil up, you know, then I, I wouldn't have hit the. But scoring there when he's when he's going to set up like this, yeah, that that was really bizarre because he's just giving you a chance to two turn without a chance to go two nil up. So okay, um, when you have so few players, let's say you're in a situation like this. Um, <clears throat> um, obviously, my setup ended up uh, biting me in the ass. But <laughs> should I try to like? I mean, what do you think about the setup here? Should I just try to space it out evenly? I mean, it, do I really have the luxury to try to defend against the blitz when I'm down players? Should I go for the, the two-turn score? Like, well, here's the thing: against his setup, he set up so far back that he wasn't in a position to capitalize on blitz. So. He KO'd himself going for it. I mean, that was he, he just set up awfully. So once he's set up like that, then I think you're absolutely entitled to set up the way you did. Oh, my God, and he caught it. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, and he scattered to the, that AG5. Is, I feel like he's what a lucky bastard. Um, oh, and then your first action's a turnover. Wow, that's brutal. So, yeah, so, I mean, he was back so far that I wouldn't have really thought about defending against the Blitz. I mean, maybe, maybe you could have done. I, I think you only, you definitely only wanted one skink uh, back to receive the ball. Um, you know, there's no need to have two back because you've got to score in two, right? So you've got to make a fucking handoff play or something or two handoff plays. So I would have definitely had both skinks, like two skinks forward and only one back. But uh, And maybe, maybe you could have tried to do something like the Crocs on the three and then spread out the four Saurus. And then just get all four Saurus forward and two Skinks. So, so yeah, I guess I guess what would have been better set up here would would be right. Let let's get into the old. Uh, let's get into the, the John Jim Madden mood. Right. So Crocs in the middle there, and then you could have had like a Saurus there and a Saur. Oh no 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 no! Scratch that! Scratch that! Okay. Um, a Saurus here, so that you could just run forward, and a Saurus here, and a Saurus here, and a Saurus here, and then like the Skinks on the LOS as well. So, so then, so this would have been two Skinks here and here, and then another Skink back, obviously to pick up the ball, and then what you could have done was, you know, on your turn one, the these streak up. It's like looks. This really looks like a hail mary now, doesn't it? This is brilliant. <laughs> they would streak up to actually to make like a screen, you know. So they kind of make a screen six squares forward. So okay. I'm yeah, going, that makes I'm, sense. Yeah. I'm going too oh. crazy here. So ideally, I think what you'd be looking at doing is essentially bypassing because he he set up so far back. The, what you could have done was, you could have ended up with a Saurus, one, two, three, four, five, six. You could have ended up with a Saurus there, Saurus there. The one that's set up here could have gone one, two, three, four, five, six. You could have had a Saurus there, and you could have had a Saurus there. And then the shits, one of the skinks is shit, isn't he? Is he uh, a loner skink? No, he's not. There's, there's a sidestep one and a loner one. So a uh, sidestep and a non-sidestep. So then you could have uh, put. Oh, move the, move the, <laughs> move the. 
<laughs> this makes things not so easy, right? So, oh no, it was right. It was right, and I fucked up now. Okay. Eh. So I I think one thing that um I could get better at is just thinking about screening more often, um, and just yeah. like using that to my advantage, um, even as a source, I guess. Like you said, it's just um, especially when you're down source, but. Yeah, just having a more of a mind of screening off the other team's movements is something I, I could definitely improve at. Yeah, because you, you could have screened off everything here, and then you could have uh, brought this skink that you'd set up here. He could have ran over there first. And then, you know, where, where the ball went, which was which was down here, wasn't it? Then you could have picked... The, oh, Christ, I'm fucking everything up here. <laughs> <laughs> then you could have brought the skink that you had back. He could have picked it up handed it off to the other skink and then that skink could have gone there you know ready to score or you could have just held it and had two skinks ready to score and then he would have yep. just given him more problems but as it was it doesn't look like you've got a plan on offense here does it it just looks like you've mashed some players at one side yeah i, I probably was yeah i was probably just tilting or something who knows yeah yeah well, and then and obviously look there look the double the double score the, the double down is is unlucky but it was a two dice block, didn't make it three, didn't move any safe moves first. Um, yeah. You know, you could have put, put a sidestepper on him at least. Um, I think I was just trying moves. to free up my block Saurus was the thinking. But yeah. yeah, but you could you could have still moved the other two Saurus and two Skinks first and stuff. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. Yeah, proper screening. Don Akella says proper screening is very important for proper lizard play because it keeps you from getting herb derped. Yeah, I mean, normally if you're lizard men, this is this is not like a normal lizard man game because normally you've got six auras and now you've got four. So, you know, normally you've got more to work with in terms of uh, keeping them keeping them away from your skinks. But yeah, like the, yeah. I don't like the tight cage. You did a tight cage and. It's it's hard because obviously you're against Skaven, so you kind of had to make a, 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 a like a strong cage against them, because they're fucking agility five who can one dice you, which is just fucking stupid, you know. But normally, yeah, you just want to screen, and like basically like my ogres. I guess my ogres were, were a good, a very good thing for lizards because they're like lizards but shit. <laughs> so. Yeah, so, I will say, I, I'm not a, I don't play with Lizardmen that often, um, so this was actually kind of the first time that I've actually tried to go through a few games through ladder. So, I'm not right. totally experienced with them, but, yeah, yeah, all makes sense. Yeah, so I, yeah, that's, uh, but that's basically it, yeah, so, the, oh, why would you double one the dodge? <laughs> Always. <laughs> <laughs> that was, that's the best way to defend, just, just hope your opponent rolls snakes and then, then you're laughing. <laughs> So yeah, so, yeah, it is, it is like the ogres in the skins, and there's like there's two halves to your team, isn't there? And and you've got seven strong guys who protect the four shitty guys, and, and like they are shitty. Like I, I don't know, they're weird because you can absolutely win with one skink, but and and I don't mind what what I what I don't mind doing sometimes is is leave somebody with like say two GFIs to blitz a skink or something, or a or a GFI to blitz a skink, something like this, so that if they go for it then you know that what kind of player they are <laughs> you know? yeah. and then you know how how much to how keep how safe to keep your skinks or if you can if you can tempt them with something that will really harm them later and stuff obviously it might cost you a skink so maybe not such a good idea now you're on defense so yeah i mean defensive wise with this many players <laughs> yeah i mean i i can't I will say that I end up losing one zero. So. <laughs> yeah, that's that's incredible. That's, that's incredible. I mean, I, I would say maybe just put those three skinks in a row here between this between the saurus. Um. Yeah, something a little bit more aggressive. Yeah, aggressive, but more aggressive and safer because he can stick Lyman on your skinks, and. You're not, it's not easy for you to dodge away. Like the thing about the ogres was, at least I can dodge away in a two plus, right? But your three plus with a reroll is is very unreliable. 
So yeah. you really don't want your skinks to get to get man marked if if you can avoid it. So if you put three here, the, he's got to knock down the the crocs to get at them realistically. Um, so maybe he's maybe what I would have done was br brought in the the saurus either one away or, or next to the uh, adjacent to the crocs or just one square away from him, and then put yep. the skinks in here to protect them. And then yeah, you might get a turnover. Maybe. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Yeah. I think I deleted this team actually. <laughs> yeah, don't blame me. I mean, there's really not a lot you can do when you're taking this amount of Kaz against Skaven, really. Like, no team really can 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 cope with that. But especially losing two Saurus is horrific. But one, one was... Well, maybe it's even... There were, there were a few times that you've... I think, yeah, you've followed up. Almost by default. Yeah. Uh, that that's okay because following up allows you to stand up the other Saurus, and it keeps this this uh, this mighty blow guy under control. So this is exactly what you're trying to do. This is this is good. You know, you've got the mighty, you've got the block guys occupied, so they can't splat skinks, and you you can't even get an assist for his his mighty blow guy. So that that's really good, getting the mighty blow guy out muscled. That's something I, I you can even do it like you can do it against Clawpon Beastmen. Uh, at higher TV, you know, if you've got a couple of guards, Saurus or whatever, you can you can get them stranded and or like you know it, with Wood Elves get a tackleless stranded on a tree or whatever. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, like uh, the the video you showed the other day, uh, like the half the halflings beating the dwarves uh, yeah. that like bunch of mighty blow guard dwarves, and it was just based on the fact that he had four string six running around. <laughs> yeah. so he was able to out, out muscle a bunch of those guys. Yeah. It was a right sidestep square. I like I like the sidestep. <laughs> <laughs> like my sidestep moves. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ooh, not sure I like. Oh, this to get a one dice. So yes, he he did well to get the one dice there. Yeah, that was that was a nice little. He did a nice little move. Maybe you could have had your skink there to stop that, but I didn't even think of that. So fair play to him, getting the one dice. Yeah. Blocking with block. Turns out it's pretty good. <laughs> I think I would have put him back to where he was just so that he could um you know get the assist. Uh, just so we can keep keep the uh, mighty blow guy on muscle, but I guess you can block him into the uh, crocs anyway, so No oh, no, I would I would have blocked him into the crocs. For sure. You know. If he if yeah, he's in keep it up tight up. Because now he can one dice you, can't he? Um, if he wants, and it's not right. hard for him to two dice you. So yeah. Maybe, maybe he would have gone off the ball a little bit. I mean, there's kind of no point because he can just pass, can't he? But still, that would be two, two one in thirty six as if he did pass. Yeah, I think my thinking there was um, I was just trying to prevent the quick score. Uh, I feel like if I if I would have put pressure on the ball, he probably just would have ran around or threw yeah. my tackle zone super easy and then a handoff and score. So I think I was more worried about the uh, the potential handoff there. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. However, if he had gone for it, he would have rolled that double one. But yeah, it's it's a horrible <laughs> situation one nil down against rats because it is so easy for them to get the score. Yeah, I mean horrible. Yeah. Yeah, blitz, blitzing with block first, very good. <laughs> <laughs> I think I would have taken the both down and just kept him... Uh, like, I don't know why I would have done, but I just would have done. I don't know why. Yeah, kind of kind of keep him a little bit more enclosed. Yeah. The one sidestepper. Now he's just gonna. Now he's gonna do the, the dodge throughs. Uh, yeah, the uh, that was, um, getting the uh, the blitz on the the line right on the ground and hitting, palling my skink there was a little frustrating. Yeah. So I'm I'm a little behind I think from what what you're going through. Yeah. And yes, Gunark, and this will be on YouTube. Yeah, I'll upload it. I'll upload it as soon as we finish. Actually, might as well. So yeah, he does the pass, but I mean, this is a dangerous play from him, isn't it? 
Incredibly dangerous is, going yeah, on the sideline. This is why he doesn't score. Yeah. Ah, but he, he got the assist in there, but he can he can free up this block one. Yep. yep. Now see what I would have done here is straight away. I'll pause it. This skink could have come one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and assist and made that a three dice. Um, which, you know, I mean, by keep, yeah. keeping him yeah. there, he was he was free to score. If the if the ball, you know, obviously you're gonna you, your plan is to surf this guy, right? And if the right. ball went this way, he would have been there for a, some kind of handoff play. It seems super unlikely, though. I think, and plus being down men against um, Skaven, like uh, he probably should have been in the action. I yeah, I think I think he should have come back for the assist three dice because you know you, you're going for a fifty. You need the knockdown here to free up your guy. Yeah, and it's only fifty five percent with two dice. So yeah, absolutely would have brought him in to get to yeah, get the three sense. dice there. Yeah. This is like two GFIs to surf, isn't it? Oh, <laughs> typical. <laughs> hey, got him. <laughs> oh, dead! <laughs> oh man, what a what a great what a great blood ball player that is. Roll a one on the first <laughs> fucking <Warriors>. GFI, <laughs> and then kill him. <laughs> Brutal. No, I went for yeah, I went from like. Thinking game over to holy shit! I like this game again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So here now, once see now, once you've done that, having this guy here is actually amazing because now we can go in and pick up the ball or whatever, or put people around the ball. Right. Um, I don't like making the dodge and the pick up without moving that guy. So yeah, I would have. Yeah, I would have definitely moved him, moved him just around and not dodged, and then moved him back with the pick up. So yeah. Yeah, yeah. It would be nice to have him in. Like once you've done that, but I, I personally would have moved him in to make the, the the Crocs a three dice. But once you hadn't yep. done that, it, it would actually been amazing to have got him around the ball. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Sidestepping skinks. Pretty good. Getting blocked by block, very bad for a skink. <laughs> <laughs> red dice in him. That's a horrible. That's a horrible red dice, isn't it? Because now you've got to activate him and get a push to get him uh, back in his his danger player based. Yeah. Good block to free him. I like obviously didn't work, but it was <laughs> it was <laughs> it was <laughs> it was the right idea. Yep. Nothing. He, he gets he gets the guy up the guy up again. Yep. Now one dice blitz. Hmm. I don't know. I think I would have tried to get. I'd tried to have got him in it somehow as well. Uh, could you have? Could you have got him in? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So he could have made a one dice block. So you, what you could have done is you could have just moved that sidestepper down. You know, under the ball, like adjacent to the ball carrier, and then blitzed with the other yeah. skink. So at least it would have mitigated the risk somewhat. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I don't hate him staying there though. It's not just just idea rather than anything else. I was very happy to take the vote down there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was like, sure. You have to do any kind of armor roll on that AG5. It might have been the wrong play there. I don't know. I didn't want to use a reroll either, but I was happy to take it. Yeah, it's just it's just that he's got the other the other gutter free, hasn't he? That is the that is the problem there. Yeah. Yeah, and if he didn't get KO'd, then it would have been even more of an issue. Yeah. So do you think I should have rerolled that one die? No, 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 I think that's I think that's fine. It's just that I would have that's why the the fact that you would have taken the one die is why I would have wanted to just base him with a sidestepper first, then go for the dodge. With the other one to one dice him, based on the premise that you will accept the both down. If you weren't going to accept the both down, then leaving the other skin free to act afterwards, I think is fine. Yeah. So it kind of seems like kind of a theme in this game is that I just um, not not getting in the mix enough. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, just not just forgetting players or 
um, leaving them uh, out of the way um, and not screening also. Yeah, yeah. And actually, actually, exactly like my Oka playoff game where I just, uh, I, I don't know if you, I know you were playing a game, weren't you? Before this, I looked at my Oka game and I just moved out a diving tackler and moved him nowhere. He, he just, and he could have based the uh, the Black Oak that either did the block or, no, the, the Black Oak that did the block to free the other Black Oak. I could have based him with a with a snotling, which would have been a defensive assist and it would have made it a one dice instead of a two dice block. And I just left him and did nothing with him. So, you know, yeah, that's yeah, definitely making use of all your players. Like this skink, he's kind of a scoring threat, but he's not really doing a whole lot, is he? This, this you know, in the other half there, he's just like, I mean, he is a scoring threat, not even kind of, he's a definite scoring threat, but is that what you need when you're down so many players? Oh, he's down a few players as well. He's down a lot of players now, actually. So you actually are men up. So it's not so important, I guess, once you're men up. But yeah, m making making the most of you guys. Definitely wouldn't activate the Crocs here because I probably wouldn't, wouldn't have even made that block that you made with the uh, Saurus there because, you know, the one in nine chance is uh, terrifying. But yeah, good, good not activating the Crocs. Sidestep skin gets splattered. So yes, yeah, so straight away that you could have made a screen there, couldn't you? With the uh, that, that skin, if that skin could be one square south, um, but then he would have made a screen with the Crocs, and he couldn't have, yeah. he couldn't have made that play. Yeah, I don't do a very good job of thinking about screening. I guess. Yeah. Here, here you could have freed up a. Uh, you could have made. You could have got three dice in the ball. Well, I guess you still. No, now you can only get. Yeah. Now you can only get uh, two, but again, yeah, I think that I think that was the right play to try it for him up for a blitz on the ball. Um, oh, and then you get a surf as well. Oh, that's that's actually really good, isn't it? <laughs> a little lucky, yeah. That's actually really good. I I think I would have made the block with the Crocs first to try it free the Saurus, and then try to get a three dice on the ball, but that worked out pretty well, didn't it? I think he no longer has any gutters on the field. <gasps> oh, I hate that. I hate that. Oh, no, I don't hate that GFI. No. No, you had to make it, didn't you? You had to make the GFI just because you were you were 10 squares away. And you, so you had to make two. You had no reroll. So, yeah. The, that GFI was absolutely necessary. Yeah, that was his last That was his last gutter. But now he knows that you can't score. And that was it. But that yeah, was... I think it's a good game at this point. Yeah. So, actually, yeah. So, having that guy, although he was there... Um, and he was a bit out of the way doing nothing. At least, yeah, you were mindful of which turn it was, so that that's not bad, is it? Maybe he should have actually been two squares uh, further north rather than one square further. You know, he was he was kind of caught between, wasn't he? That skink. If he'd been if he'd been close at the end zone, so he could have scored without without GFIs, that might have been better. Or if he'd been further yeah. south, making a screen with the crocs. But yeah, screens yeah. are very I mean, the, important. The mistakes, the mistakes were made in my drive in the first. That led to this loss, you know, the uh, leaving the source out to dry and um, yeah. uh, activating the Crocs and uh, or putting him in the wrong place and him boneheading on the drive and yeah, it was uh, a <laughs> the the game was lost in the first half, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah, the, let, letting them blitz a skink at like when it's like you know every, everyone does this base in the ball and like I I, I slate the base in the ball a bit. There's no point basing the ball. If it doesn't compromise their goals for the turn, you know, like blitzing him away. If, if blitzing away the guy who's marking the ball doesn't cost them anything, all you're doing is giving them an assist to their blitz. <laughs> That's yeah. literally all you're doing. Like it's harming you if you base the ball when it's when they don't care where they blitz. And in, in on that turn there, he didn't care where he blitzed. You know, you, it was turn turn two of the half or whatever, turn one or yep. two of the half. He didn't care where he was yep. blitzing, and you just gave him a skink that he could blitz with three dice mighty blows. We, he's taken that all day. It's not it's not costing him anything to do it. And also, yep. he could have assisted and, and just got a two dice on a Saurus, which could, didn't yep. cost him anything. And while he did get slightly lucky making it a one dice through choice and, and making it a Kaz, and he got lucky with a Kazzing the skink, he obviously, on another day, he could have blitzed that skink and not even knocked him over. So he, he, he got very lucky casting the Saurus and quite lucky casting the Skink. But yeah, they were absolutely two things that could have 100% been avoided. Yep. Yeah, makes sense. Um, so hopefully, hopefully that was that was useful. Yeah, it was. No, I, I appreciated it. I got some stuff to work on. Um, screening, not throwing Skinks out to die. 
Um, I'm not sure how often I'll be playing with Lizardmen. They're fun, but they have a hard time developing, So, and I don't get to play that many games. Yeah. But uh, maybe if I joined a league or something, I'd consider playing Lizardmen, but that was fun. I, I appreciate you going through this with me. Oh, very good. Well, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and stay fantastic.